Welcome, friends. Hi, guys. It's another Friday, Wednesday. Friday, Wednesday. Friday, Wednesday. I like See, that. we film on Friday and we release episodes every other Wednesday. That's the goal, at least. So, welcome. I'm Zach. This is Christopher. And together we are Dream EV. Dream EV. Continuing the van again. Episode 25, the wiring episode, I guess. One of many. <laughs> one, of, <laughs> one of many. What we're going to try and accomplish today is we're going to restore and reinstall the existing wiring harness. Um, we stripped it way back to only what's absolutely necessary about 10 episodes ago. Um, and now we're putting it back together. We got a couple connectors that are going to have to go in for the high brake light. Um, we got a new mains power for the front fuse box that needs to be run. And uh, we're going to wrap it with some Tessa tape, I think. That'd be fun. Yeah. Okay, Zach, with this wiring, we got lots of stuff to unbox. Eight gauge wire, some matching black signal wire. That's one crimper. That's a stripper. Oh, we got a big pincher. LED turn signals for the rear. This is a shielded twisted wire. These guys are super fun. As fun as electrical connections can be, I suppose. Open barrel crimps. The bolts for the terminals on our battery. Ring terminals. Heat shrink. These are Z case fuse boxes. Kapton tape. Alien tape. Aliens. Yep, that's what we got from the crash at Roswell. Tape. I almost forgot, Zach, one of the most important things is from our viewer. He wouldn't let me see it until I was on camera. Yeah, I'm actually, I, so, I know what it is. I'm pretty excited about it. Let me put this here. Let's see what's going on here. What in the world? So we got stickers. I'm a Vanagoon! These are good. This is the best one. I like it too, man. I'm These excited. Fun. Let's actually go put one on, because I'm uh, I got a good spot for it. I think the gimme all your money is gonna go on the van, and I think what we're gonna do with the other ones. I think we'll give them away to the other viewers that might want them. I like that. Yeah. So if you guys would like a cool Vanagon sticker, uh, give us a comment. We've got, uh, what, like five left that we can send out. Thank you very much, Minsk. These are a lot of fun. For all you people out there, if you want one, there's this little Etsy page right there. Go check it out, man. And you don't have to be Vanagon people especially, I suppose. But if you do have a Vanagon and your Vanagon has a name, let us know down below that your van named Herman really, really could use a cool sticker. Does our van have a name? I don't know if this van has a name. I got a, I got a comment that said that um, it was called the uh, Van, 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 Van Wanda, Van Wanda, Teslanda. Tess, Teslagon? Teslagon? I don't know. It was an interesting name. Thanks, Minsk. See that? Yeah. I don't know why Christopher didn't think of that a long time ago. Well, we had no reason for close-ups. Now we do. I want to show people, like, tools up close, wires up close, <laughs> crimps up close. Like, you got to see things up close to you know, know what's going on. In this episode, we are going to be um, crimping, repairing, and adding plugs to our stock wiring harness so that we can tie into the factory loom. Let's start with uh, the connectors we use. A couple reasons why we went with the Metropack connectors over, let's say, a Delphi connector or a, um, a German connector, a Dutch, a Dutch, Dutch connector, I want to say. Deutsch poorly pronounced. Um, we went with these because of the fact that they're waterproof, they come in a kit, and they are a metric standard, a 2.8 millimeter terminal connection. And these 2.8 terminals will go up to 30 amps. So for the most part, this will cover all of our low power connection needs. That's why we went with this. Secondarily to this, 
the Metropack connector system also supports um, ISO standard 2.8 style relays, fuses, diodes. You get the point. You get the point. Um, and, uh, and we're going to be doing some of those things. So I went with this kit and we will work with it. So in order to work with these Metropack connectors and really any connectors, um, you need the proper tooling. You can't just go grab any old crimper, you know, that you have laying around with crimping capabilities and hope that it's going to work because these crimps are kind of, uh, they're engineered. They're very precise. You want to get the right diameter of wire with the right connector and the right crimp and the right everything. If you don't, they can come undone. And that's why people don't like to crimp because they don't have the right tools. There's a reason that the factory crimps. Um, first of all, it's fast. And then um, it's solid. If you do it right, like you said, if you've got the right tools, if you've got the right products and a little bit of know-how, uh, you can get a perfectly solid connection with crimps. The right tools we bought is a generic crimper for the Metropack series, okay? This has three of the heart-shaped crimps. Can you see that? Yeah, it's just a pointer. And two circular crimps. The two circular crimps are for the seals on the backside. Okay, and I guess you can see the part number there if you're really interested in buying this particular tool. Um, there are a number of tools that are designed to work with the Metropack series. I grabbed this one because it's orange. Um, a second proper tool we have is this Delphi tool. Uh, this is used for open barrel crimps. It also has the same heart shape crimp profile. And if you'll see, you can see this right here. Thank you, Zach. You can see where the lobes of the heart are and the bottom side. And they come in various sizes so you get the proper crimp. When you're using a Metropack crimp or an open barrel crimp, it's important to use the right size. Um, there is a calculation for it. It's called a circular mill area calculation. There are charts so you don't have to do the circular mill area calculations. And secondarily to that, you can just do a crimp and test it. But there's a proper way to do it if you're interested. Circular mill area. Google it. So let's jump to a crimp. Now I have here my red and black wire, right? And we're gonna bust this bad boy open right in the center and make two crimps. And I guess since I already have the conductors ex exposed, I can use these ends, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna use these ends. So I can demo my new stripping tool. This is very exciting. This is a Capri stripping tool. You can see the part number. It has teeth for the different wire sizes and it has a stripping gauge for the proper length. And we'll go ahead and use that guy real quick. I love this tool. I bought this tool and I'm in love with it. Absolutely in love with it. Um, one of the reasons why I went with this tool over the different styles is because the jaws, these teeth, right? You can get different teeth for different sizes and you can also get new ones when the teeth wear out because it's a consumable. We got these ends stripped, so we're gonna start assembling the things we need to make this happen. I'm gonna dig out, this is probably 14 to 12. So we're gonna grab our 14 to 12 male and 14 to 12 female. I would say it's pretty close to 14. We're gonna grab two of them. One for each side. Pretty less than seven to take away. And you can see this 2.8 millimeter conductor, right? That's that bad boy. And the 2.8 millimeter female, that's that one. They go together inside the plug. Actually, we need these as well. One way TPA, 10 pieces. I think we need two of these. Yeah, we need two of these. And then we also need amateur hour here. Don't even worry about this, guys. We also need that. We have all of our things that make this connector happen. 
and we're gonna go ahead and actually make them happen. The first thing we do is take our seals and shove them on the back side. Right? This seal keeps the water from coming in, and if you don't have a wire in the plug, there's also blank off seals that keep this entire assembly waterproof. So that guy goes in there, and then we go to Crimp Town. Okay. Now we are crimped, and we shove this seal into the back side right here, and then we take our circular crimp hole, right there, that one probably, and we're going to go ahead and crimp it as well. See that? You can see that. It's actually a pretty good shot right there. And then we have the conductor and the seal both properly crimped. We're going to do that a second time. Okay, now that we have our conductor and seals both in place, we can shove them into the body and it's basically downhill from here. Um, I want to say this is the female end, and we'll shove it in, I'll hold just like this, yep, and then we have the male end, okay, and that's clipped in and watertight at this point. Okay, these guys both need retention plugs on the back side that keeps these wires from pulling out and keeps these plugs set in there properly. So we're going to go ahead and clip them in. Okay. And then finally, these guys can get connected. And there's a second connection that we're going to be using extensively. It's the open barrel connection. And I'm actually super stoked about this. I saw this on the internet and uh, my heart skipped a beat and I said, I need that. They look like that. That's an open barrel crimp right there. And they come in three sizes. There's a small open barrel crimp, there's a medium open barrel crimp, and there's a large open barrel crimp. So we're gonna use this tool, this Delphi tool with a ratcheting for this. And the reason why we're gonna use this is because the, rat the ratcheting feature makes everything much easier when it comes to assembly because it can hold the open barrel crimp in place while you maneuver the wires. And the way I've been doing this, kind of take the crimp and stick it on the tip of your finger, just like that, and put the, put the tool over it. Yeah, if you've got big meaty fingers, you might find this slightly difficult. Okay. They're very small. They are. I have. I've had a hard time getting the small ones in. Okay, so this crimper just, just holds it in place and now we're ready for the wires. Um, <clears throat> this is also a very difficult step because it, it kind of it requires three hands. And I'll show you what I did to get around this. I got this guy. It's just a, it's a, um, a drill press clamp and I use it to hold this tool in place so I can maneuver with the hands that I don't <laughs> with the hands I don't have. So take a look here. See how that's set up with the crimp? If you're doing it by yourself, this is a great tool. But since I got Zach here, he's gonna go ahead and hold it and then we'll maneuver these wires. Or I'll have Zach maneuver the wires actually. How about that? Gotcha. I've had to make multiple open barrel crimps and redo these a couple times just because of the newness of the tool and the technique, um, but it cuts out and it'll recrimp just as easily as, as it did the first time. Okay, now keep them tight. I'm going to show you both sides. See how the conductor's kind of po poking out on this left side? We also want it poking out on the right side. And once we get the conductors where we want it, we go ahead and give it a good solid crimp. And when you get the crimp all the way down, the tool will automatically release. It's super happy. So After that, everything's in place and we are ready for heat shrink. Okay. Now you can use a heat gun. 
probably the safer thing to do. But my heat gun takes a little bit to heat up and it's slightly frustrating. And there's our connectors. So we're gonna be using uh, the Metropack connectors and we're gonna be using the open barrel connectors to repair our harness. And we're gonna tap into it at a couple different places and we're gonna get ready for the rest of our electric version. Okay, we are about to hook up our temporary power. Hopefully I don't get any sparks. we'll see if there's some sparks. Hey, that's good. Is that the, the doors open signal? Uh, doors open and keys in, I think. Okay. Let's plug this in, I think we're good, yeah? That is so much more annoying than a modern ding, ding, ding. No, this is good, this is good, I like it. Okay, so, now that we have our temporary power, we can hook up the wiring harness and the lights repair the spots that are broken, patch in the plugs, and tidy up the back half of this harness. That's the next step. All right, we have discovered a few things. Um, many, many episodes when we first cut back the loom and, and weeded out some stuff that we didn't need, at the end we rechecked everything to make sure it worked, and we found out that like these old holders are really finicky on, on the bulbs, and so we had to do that again, make sure they were all working. And then we found out the brakes are activated by a pressure switch and a master cylinder. And there's no fluid in there right now, so we had to jump that in order to get the brakes to work, but they work. So anyway, we know everything works. Now we need to, all these little crimp connectors that the previous owner put on or someone in the past put on, uh, we need to take all of these out. There's a whole ton of them. Uh, get those out, splice back in for a uh, trailer harness so that we could hook up a trailer and have lights for a trailer. And then also going up to our top light on the window. So that's where we're at. We've double checked, everything works. Uh, and now we have to cut into it and make repairs and do our splices. Top and bottom. It looks like three different attempts at putting some sort of high brake light, some sort of reverse light on. And each attempt was done by somebody different. All right, you see these white and blue parasitic clips that sit on the wire? That's what we're taking off. And how they work is they kind of like clip on, cut through the plastic insulation, and clamp around the conductor strand. The downsides of these parasitic clips are they really ruin your wiring. All right, I have my harness that goes to the lights repaired. All those parasitic warts are pulled off of here. And then I have five little leads to go to a future use on a trailer hitch and current use on a high brake light. So we're gonna put a plug on this end and then finish off this secondary little baby harness. These are the wires coming down from the high brake light. Uh, originally this van did not come with a high brake light up in the rear window. This was an aftermarket install. Here are the wires and we just have to add a plug to the wires and then we have to add a plug to our harness to match and it has brake light and turn signals. Uh, you can see the top light up there. This is just a little alligator clip coming off the hot side of the battery. And I'm just going to touch a wire and see what lights up. Nothing. I'm going to figure that out. Okay. Somebody has extended these wires at some point and one of the old connections is broken. So we're going to cut it with some better uh, connections and figure out what's what and go from there. Got the new positive wire stretched out next to our loom 
and it runs up to that post that I just installed up in the front for our new power supply up front. Now I'm just going to take and where the loom is just kind of bundled up with zip ties, I'll take off the zip ties and get some of that special tape and tape it all up with the new wire and get it all bundled together and ready to run to the back of the car. So that's what I'm going to do now. Wrapped up, ready to go. I think I'm going to stop here because this power cable actually needs to split off a little bit before we reach this grommet where it goes into a connector box that connects our rear loom. So um, I think I'm going to go to about here. It. How perfect was that roll of tape? Wait, I'm gonna fish it under the car. We're not doing that yet. I want to test mine first. <clears throat> so I'm done with this over here. I got all the um, the nasty splices uh, joined up and then shrink wrapped. So these are ready to test. I want to double check all of my leads. I got the five pulled out here to a separate tail. That's where the plug will go. All right. So we've been working towards our goal of fixing this wiring harness all day and we're getting pretty darn close. I have this rear light harness that basically splits out to the left and the right side. And I have here these cables marked off with what's important for um, the third brake light and for a future tow hitch hook, tow hitch plug. We need to um, plug these up to the high brake light using a connector. And the connectors we have and we're going to use today are Metropack connectors. We're trying to join two ends. This side on the factory harness and this side with the high brake light. Okay. One crimp there and then seal. Perfect. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. Alright, we're gonna keep going. We have our plugs and our seals on all eight contacts. And now we're ready for these guys. And if I remember correctly, from the internet training I attended, it just kind of goes in. Ha, there you go. Left is going to be second one. Break. It's going to be the second one. Stop. It's going to be the third one. Red is going to be break. It's going to be in the middle. And then stop is going to be, here's a right blinker, which is going to be green, right. And we got these guys in place. Boom, both plugs. Now we need the retainers. These go on the back side and they make sure that your plugs are seated. They just go like this. Pink bunk. And then that guy goes here on this this side. Bink. Bunk. And then finally, they go together and are secured. Oh, so much watertight with that. Look at that bad boy. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of him. <laughs> yes. Oh, 
jeez. <laughs> All right, just a handful of splices yet to go. It's not because I got big old Mongo hands either. I do, but they are small. All the way push it. There you go. Because I'm struggling like an old ass man with this tool. Did not get it. What happened? It like spilled out the top. Push it in. Go a little yeah. further. That's it. Oh yeah. All right. It would be two out of two, except for we've been struggling. So it's more like two out of five, honestly, at this point. There you go. Ah! Ah, three out of five. And then the final, the final countdown. You hear those wires with the crimps? Everything looks hunky-dory, happy as a clam. All right, we have our pins all pinned out and going to the high brake light. But the last person that installed it just kind of ran this through a hole really close to the brake lights without a grommet or anything else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that out, move it a little higher, and put a proper hole and a proper grommet right here. And that way we won't get any interference with the, um, with the lens as it sits in the frame. You can see this wire is just like smushed back there and it holds the lens off it's not great we're gonna do better yep uh, how did you pick that spot you might be wondering well you can actually reach your hand back in here and reach up inside this D pillar and kind of feel there's a there's a notch here uh, that was pressed in at the factory and I could feel that notch and Then if I go down a little further, there's actually a plate that blocks right here So I couldn't go any lower than that and so I can feel up in there and feel that there's a spot right here Where I can drill through and go straight through and down with this four pin connector. So that's how I chose that spot Sometimes you get out calipers and make precise measurements Sometimes you're reaching your hand up through a tail light hole into a D pillar and feeling for a notch I just like that. Yeah. Let's get the deburr. That's what the tool's for. That's what the fox says. Ding 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 a ring a ring ding. Hi 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 tool. You want to grab your hand on the back side and as I pass one through, you straighten it out or something. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. That's so much nicer. Okay. Upgraded. That looks clean, Zach. Way better than you said. Yeah, that's much better. I'm happy with that. Okay. Let's do a test. Okay. Reverse. All right. Left blinker. Left blinker. Right blinker. Right blinker. Lights. Uh, lights. Sweet. Uh, brake lights. Brake lights. Yay. All right. Okay, and hazards. Yep. Okay, so that's everything. Should be. Heck yeah, man.
Well, it's the end of the episode. We're at a good stopping point with what we've got done. Yeah, we uh, got done what we set out to do. Yeah, and it's super big that everything worked, you know? <laughs> when we took everything out and we tested it, it worked, we were excited. But still, even putting it back in again, like there's no guarantees, right? This is old stuff. This is 30, 40 year old copper wire, you know? But it's working, yeah. I'm happy. The plugs went together well. The, the open barrel crimps, oh my gosh, hold a special place in my heart. I love them so much. Oh, the things you get excited about. I mean, you gotta get excited about something in life, right? Open barrel crimps, might as well. Um, it's gonna be two weeks again and we'll be at this same place working on the same van and the same blue jumpsuits. <laughs> so come on back and uh, check it out. We'll be probably working on uh, high voltage. High voltage wiring. The electrical components, like everything has a home. We know where things live and all we gotta do is just connect them. Should be easy. I like your optimism. I just gotta have something. <laughs> Open barrel crimps and optimism. Optimism. <clears throat> well, until then, be good people.